So hi guys, um, I'm Stephanie Jordan. I'm the local food program manager at Sustainable Solano. And I have with me Noah, um, who's kind of helping on the back end of Zoom. There he is, <laughs> helping on the back end of the Zoom today. Um, and so this is our CSA class. And before we get started, I just want to do a quick land acknowledgement and honor the indigenous communities who have been stewarding our land for generations. Um, Noah will be dropping into the chat a native lands map so that you can learn more about where you live and who may have inhabited those lands earlier. Um, I'm going to give you guys an apology right now. I'm getting over kind of a nasty cold, so I might need to swing over there and grab some tissues at some point, but so far I'm, I'm holding up, so we'll, we're going to do it. Um, this class is one of many that we have done. Um, we started doing a lot of these back in 2019, of course, right before in 2020 when COVID hit. And we are actually progressing into more hands-on classes. So if you've been to a lot of our Zooms in the past and want to jump in and join us in a kitchen, please check out our calendar because we're going to be doing some um, you know, additional hands-on upcoming in the spring. I know we've got a few scheduled in Vallejo and I think one in Vacaville. So Anyhow, sustainablesolano.org is the website. You can find out all kinds of recipes and um, other classes that we're doing there. So um, at the heart of these classes is basically connecting our communities with farmers and the food that is grown here in Solano County. And so I'm pleased to have Lorraine Walker from Eat Well Farm here with us today. So hi, Lorraine. Hi, guys. There's Lorraine. Um, so she will be jumping in shortly to kind of talk more about um, the Community Supported Agriculture or CSA program, which is the focus of our class today. So um, the format of today's class, we're going to spend the first half hour or so just kind of talking about, you know, CSAs, <clears throat> excuse me, what it is, how it works, what does it cost, all of that, the logistics. And then in the second half, I'm going to put together just a very quick kind of light Asian soup that um, I was kind of craving because I'm getting over a cold, but it also, you know, was a great way to feature some of the um, ingredients that showed up in my CSA box this week. Um, and we'll talk more about what is in those boxes in a little bit. Um, and then I think as we go, Lorraine and I will both kind of talk about some recipe and meal planning ideas that we can use or that I could use and do with the ingredients that um, I'm not putting into the soup today. So We'll kind of brainstorm that out and give you recommendations on kind of how to store things. Um, we'll show you the website and all of that. So here we are. This is the homepage for Eat Well Farms website. And um, Lorraine, I thought you could start with just kind of explaining what community supported agriculture is. Yeah, I would love to. So the idea of community supported agriculture started way back in the very early 70s in Japan when um, there was a community that got together with their local farmer and they committed to giving him money up front so that he could purchase his plants and seeds and whatever he needed to grow for the season. And <clears throat> it was enough money to support him throughout the year. And what he got or what he was able to grow was then shared with the community that bought into it. So obviously CSAs have come a long way and we live here in tech savvy California. Um, and also we live here in California where we get to grow basically year round because there are a lot of CSAs in the country that are very seasonal, maybe six months. But <clears throat> for us, our, our CSA goes year round. So it would never really work where people paid us up front for a full year. And the way you would, you would sign up for our CSA is for a four delivery subscription. And with that four deliveries, you can get a box every week or you can get a box every other week. And we offer two sizes of boxes. The um, box for two contains eight items and the family box contains 11 to 12, depending on how much we have coming in. Um, the box for two for four deliveries is $106. And the family box for four deliveries is $146. And they are delivered to um, <clears throat> neighborhood sites. <clears throat> Mostly they go to people's homes, hopefully in a neighborhood that's close and convenient either to where you live or where you work. 
part of the idea behind that concept too is to keep things a little more ecological so we're not all driving to every single house for every single box um but dropping to to localized drop sites is definitely a lot more ecological and also helps keep the cost down because delivering directly to homes is pretty expensive um so with our csa um, a lot of people I know tend to be concerned that they may not be able to go through, get through a box every week, or they travel a fair bit for business. So it's quite easy to actually just go in and put your box on hold when you need to. For instance, sometimes maybe you went out a lot in a particular week and you just didn't eat a lot of your, your, your items from the box. And you know you're going to have too much the following week. You could easily just go in and hold that week. And that just means you're getting bumped out an extra delivery at the end. You never lose it. Yeah. So here so, I am on my little screen. I don't know if you guys can see this. So I just I just want <laughs> my account. So it's set up with a credit card on file, um, I believe. Or you can link a bank account, right, Lorraine? Um, we don't actually link bank accounts through there. I send out QuickBook invoices and people can pay when when they're ready. That's right. But most people pay a credit card. So most people have a card on file. Okay. So yeah, so over here on this little calendar, we can see that, you know, I had boxes delivered on the 29th and the 14th. I'm kind of set up for an every other week option. And then um, yeah. I have one scheduled on the 28th of March. And then if you wanted to hold something, I think I can just go over here to like- You can hold. actually click on the date on the calendar. <clears throat> oh, okay. Hold on. Let me so go. Any date on the calendar, you can, it might be already on the, it's already on the 28th. Oh, yeah. If you went into the future. Future. Um, okay, hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Delivered. So just click on one of those dates. Fine. 11. Oh, yeah. So up here it shows, here's the date. Mm -hmm. So then if I wanted to hold, I do that. Yep. Then there's options, donate or hold. So what's the donate? If you want to explain that too. Yeah, so <clears throat> one of the programs that um, I created many years back is what we call the Care Share program. And um, we donate 10 boxes a week uh, to Family House in San Francisco, where families stay when their very young children are in for long term care at UCSF. A lot of them are cancer patients or real serious illness. Um, and we also donate boxes to individuals who are battling cancer. But over the years, we have expanded that because, <clears throat> excuse me, we have so many CSA members who wanted to donate to the fund. So if you wanted to put your box on hold, you have the option to donate it. And so essentially what happens is it just kind of goes into a fund and it allows me to um, give free boxes away to more people. So that's what that's about. <clears throat> okay. um, yeah, and as Lorraine mentioned, these, oops, let me cancel that. <clears throat> let me go back to um, trying to figure out where the, well, we're going to talk about add-ons in a minute here. Um, but in terms of like the drop sites, sometimes they are, um, you know, a church or a private residence. They're kind of um, it varies, right? And it does. It's primarily um, people's homes, mm -hmm. but we do in Benicia. It's it's at the church. Um, mm -hmm. Vacaville, it's at someone's home. Dixon, it's at someone's home. Vallejo, it's at a home. And Fairfield, it's in a home. Yeah. So the majority is is people's houses. And I think I'm correct when I say that you deliver to all the cities in Solano County, um, with the exception of Rio Vista, I think. <clears throat> Trying to think of what cities there are. Well, not Sassoon. Um, um, okay, so Fair, well, Fairfield is right next to Sassoon. So yeah. Benicia, Vallejo, Vacaville, and Dixon. Fairfield, Vacaville, Dixon. Okay, yeah. perfect, all right. Um, and then at the site, so let's say I sign up for a box, I go to the, the site. Um, oh, here, this is fun. What's in the box? Oh, no, but wait. Um, well, that's because it's a future. You'd have to look at this yeah. week's box. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> here we have a fun <laughs> list of all the things and I will show them to you live. Um, okay. So there's my, my list of things I got. Um, 
the let's see the storefront are the okay that's kind of our main landing page here so the different subscriptions are over here so we can you can decide here um you know which which size we want to do the family or the box for two um right. as we had mentioned and um Oh, yes. And then there's the add-ons. So I think let's go to that next. So then there's all these fun. Um, if I go to additional fruit, I'm just trying to think where I know somewhere on here. Oh, it's the store. I think I just got to scroll down. But if you, <clears throat> there you go. Yeah. And the additional veggies are further down. They're at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Right. And there's gift certificates and um it kind of all over the place. And then I know you have a lot of um, lavender and fun body products too. So I don't know if you want to talk about that. Yeah. So we, we um, started out many, many years ago growing lavender and distilling it for essential oil and hydrosols and making lavender salt. And then we kind of expanded that and included rosemary from rose geranium and lemon verbena. And then <clears throat> the body line kind of got a little bit bigger. We we did uh, sugar scrub, massage balm, a salve. And then over the last couple of years, I've been working on really expanding it. And I've come out with a, a pretty simple and versatile uh, facial line. And then we, I developed a deodorant, a hand sanitizer, a pillow spray, a hand soap. Um, and then we have all the culinary salts for cooking with, which are great. Yeah, I really appreciated the hand sanitizer <laughs> like over the last couple of years during COVID because some of that stuff just smells so horrible. And so, but yours was great. It's harsh. It's harsh. So the, the hand sanitizer that we make is uh, made with an organic alcohol. So a very, very high proof alcohol that you would use like for herbal extracts. Um, and then our rosemary essential oil, our our lavender essential oil and our lemon verbena essential oil so it's it's really lovely all the body products are made with um ingredients that we grow on the farm that's awesome yeah here's a little rundown of some of the you know different products soaps salves, yeah. all of this so it's really nice okay yeah this you ha i haven't really looked at this section in a long time and you've definitely built it out a lot more. I should go and do more shopping on body products. So, yeah, yeah, you great. should. I know. Um, so yeah, so these are just kind of the main areas you can click. Um, the thing that I uh, really appreciated, especially during COVID, but even, you know, still today is that uh, Lorraine has a great way of collaborating with other food producers. And so um, like on these pantry goods, for example, there's almonds uh, from another farm. You know, there's all these yummy, delicious things and some staples that you can add on from area farms. So you're kind of an aggregator and a distributor and a farmer, <laughs> all of it wrapped up into one. Yep. So the coffee is actually a Vacaville. They're CSA members, and that's a Vacaville company, the Atlas Coffee, and they have a cafe in town. Yeah, Which, they are amazing. They, yeah. yeah, their coffee yeah. is excellent, and it's it's really um, it's so much fun for me to be able to work with CSA members and to work with people. So all of these these products that I bring in that do not come from our farm, I chose them very specifically because they're coming from people I know quite well, and they're friends of mine. And they were all almost all of them came from the farmers market. And they were foods I was bringing home every week. And I thought, you know, so many of our CSA members are not going to the Ferry Plaza Farmer's Market. And I know they would love these products. So uh, I wanted to be able to bring them in. KP Mills, who um, does freshly milled flowers, we're actually growing probably about 16 acres of wheat for him right now. So some of the flour we'll have next, well, in probably in about nine months, um, will be milled from wheat grown here at Eatwell. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's oh, a that's really nice collaboration. Yeah, that's awesome. Love that. 
These are some of the best olives I've ever had, by the way. Those oh my gosh, they are tremendous. Yeah. He also makes fresh pasta. And I'm hoping as soon as my egg production ramps up a little bit more that um, I'll be able to supply him with eggs for his pastas. Oh, fun. But really, my goal is to connect people to the food that they eat, or at least more of the food that they eat. And uh, being kind of that person in the middle where I know these people, like I know Steve Sando, who's the, the founder and owner of Rancho Gordo, um, the man who set up all the contracts with the bean growers all around the world, essentially, is uh, Jim Shrupp, who lives over in Winters, and he's a very, very good friend of, of the family. Um, <clears throat> ow! Sorry, <laughs> kittens. Ooh, you got me good. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, so yeah, it's just, it's my way of bringing people a lot closer to, to not only the food that they get from us, but some of the other food that they can, they can get through us. Mm -hmm. so when you, I mean, yes, you could go to the store and buy Rancho Gordo beans. You could buy somebody else's beans, but you're not, not going to, you're not going to hear stories from me about them. Like you, you know, like you would buying them at the, you know, from the farm because we, I'm always telling stories about all the people that I'm working with. So mm -hmm. it's just, it's a nice connection. Yeah, for sure. Um, before I depart from this site, um, I see that you have some farm events over here and I know that you do fun events, but yes. maybe speak a little bit about those different kinds of events that you do. So right now I've got the only event I have scheduled is uh, an adult cooking class. It's a hands-on cooking class here at the farm, actually in the farmhouse. And um, it'll start at 11 in the morning and go till probably about five till we have had dinner. And the idea is to create a meal out of what we have in the CSA box that week. And it's going to be a very kind of free form We'll see what's in the box. Um, I'm hoping to serve a mid-afternoon, early afternoon tea um, with uh, making some, some scones with the KPMLs flour and some refreshed strawberry jam with strawberries that I have in the freezer, unless we've got some strawberries coming out of the field that early, but I kind of doubt it. Um, and I want to make some clotted cream. This cat is going crazy. <laughs> Um, yeah. And, and then, you know, we'll, we'll pull apart a box and we'll figure out how to, uh, figure out what we're going to make for dinner. Go yeah. on you. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I wanted to also just touch on, um, kind of your, your support and communications with subscribers, which I think is really great. And I was looking over here to find, um, your newsletter. I'm not sure if I can find it through um it's on the if you go to eatwell.com you can see all of our new newsletters oh. there's a heading okay eatwell.com to the home okay yeah so if you go over csa farm box one more goes oh, and, there is. and then oh, scroll down mm -hmm. here we go all the newsletters are there okay okay i just wanted to sh pull one up and show it cuz they're so great um so lorraine every week sends out um, a newsletter, roughly one or two pages long. There's always some fun photos, kind of a little recap of what's going on at the farm, um, some logistical information, and there's always, always recipes of some sort. And so I thought this was kind of nice. You have a little lesson on fennel here about what to use and what not to use, um, a tzatziki and a pesto, and um, we'll be working with um, the green garlic here in a minute too. So let me admit this person. Um, yeah, so this is this is always great to get, and and I must say that as a subscriber to Eat Well, you know Lorraine is very accessible. You know she encourages text messages if you have questions or email or always, know, yeah, always, whatever. Texting, I love it when the members text me because then I can have a direct communication with them, mm -hmm. um, like in an immediate communication with with them, which is really fun. Because for me, <clears throat> the whole idea behind the farm is, is the community aspect of community supported agriculture. And I think when people have a chance to come to the farm or to talk to me, or whether it's in an email or text or actually meeting me, I think you're, 
the way you feel about what you eat completely changes. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I had a CSA member who emailed me and she said, tonight we had a dinner with um, a bunch of the veggies from the box and Rancho Gordo beans that she got at the farmer's market and olive oil that she got at the farmer's market. And then one other thing that was in her meal that they they got from somebody they knew. And, and so literally something like 95% of what she was eating came from people she had met or had some kind of connection to. And that makes your food just so much more special. You know, I mean, you don't take it for granted, I think, quite as much when when you know the people behind it. And, it, you know, for me, I, I work very hard to offer a lot of events to try and get the members out to the farm as much as I can. So we'll do strawberry picking pretty soon, as soon as the berries are ready. And, and what I'll do usually now um, is I'll do a brunch and then strawberry picking. And then in the summertime, when tomatoes are ready, we have tomato saucing parties and um, members are always welcome to come out and camp in the garden if they want, uh, as long as we get it scheduled and my crew isn't having one of their big quinceanera parties or a birthday party or something. Um, my guys have lots of parties out in the garden too, so. No, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So the website is eatwell.com. Really yes. so straightforward. Okay, great. Um, anything else you want to mention, Lorraine? I think you covered a lot. No, a lot I think so. Website, so. Yeah, we also have eggs. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. We have a lot of chickens and a lot of eggs. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to shift back over here. Um, so now I just kind of want to show the actual ingredients that were in the boxes. So let me do a little rearranging here. Got a compost bucket sitting around. So this is the box. See this? Here it is. This is what shows up. Um, and I know Lorraine, you were you were shifting to bags for the for the box for, box two, for, for the two. right. Mm -hmm. It's now a bag. Um, and then the family boxes, which have those few more ingredients, around eleven, I think you said. Um, are going to continue to be in these boxes. And so what we had in the family box was a, I got a red cabbage. You had a green cabbage on the website, but we got red cabbages. Um, a very beautiful bunch of Swiss chard, a little rainbow chard here. The fennel that you were kind of featuring in your newsletter. Um, we have some chives and some green garlic, which I'll be working with shortly. And I believe this is the normal sized radicchio. Yeah. <laughs> the There's... one in the other box I had was like three times this size. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, a little bunch of parsley and some citrus, which is a few of these lovely mandarins. Mm -hmm and some lemons, and there's more because I washed a up a couple of things because I was going to use it. Um, there was also some spring onions, a little bunch of these, which was, I was excited to see those because I really wanted to kind of work with those today. So, all right. Um, and you know, even though I got red cabbage, I found this in my fridge. I think this actually came in an eat well box. Uh, on the one probably two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. I'm going to use that one just so my soup doesn't turn um, pink. So, yes. Um, yeah. So so communication between SA and I isn't so great. <laughs> so I'm sorry about all this kind of weird lighting I have going on here. Um, and I don't think this box is too much in the way. So, essentially, the box for two would have. Um, Everything except the parsley, the spring onions, and, and you know what? There was one other thing. Hold on. Yeah, the mustard. The mustard, yes. Okay, the family box. I put it in the fridge and I forgot to take it out. So, yeah, there it is. I kind of had it in a bag already. So, there's our little Red mustard. Jacket. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to use some of that too while I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> Okay. All right.
right, so this is just a really kind of quick, easy um, Asian soup. And the reason I wanted to do this one is because I'm actually gonna use one of the add-ons too, which is the kimchi. So the soup is gonna get a lot of flavor from some of this um, Napa cabbage kimchi, which is by Volcano Kimchi. And this was like one of the add-on things that we could um, work. So um, let me grab a little bit of oil. I just realized it got cold. I'm gonna use something kind of neutral. So I'm gonna do like an avocado oil. We can also do a, a vegetable oil of some sort. Um, though I really like avocado. So, <clears throat> so first I'm gonna use, um, I think I'm gonna do two of these spring onions and I'm just gonna shave off the bottom root pieces. I've got a little compost bucket down here. You see me like toss things in there. And I'm gonna kind of make this a little bit chunky because, whoop, there goes a piece rolling off. Um, you know, I kind of feel like these are grown up scallions and I'm gonna put some of the greens in right now too and just let them brown a little bit. And then I'm gonna save some of those greens for a little bit of garnish at the end. Okay. And there are more knife skills classes on our website in case you guys want to little tips and tricks for, uh, for the knife skills that I'm doing here. <laughs> this is one of my favorite tools, the bench scraper. So I'm going to put the spring onions in with some carrots. I believe these carrots came from terra firma, which is a farm kind of down the road from Eat Well. And I scrubbed these yeah. so the peel. And it's, it just creates more food waste with all the peeling. Um, you know, there's one kind of little spot on one side here that I'll peel off, but otherwise looks pretty good. Just dice those up. <laughs> And so the, you know, whenever we do a soup, you always want to kind of start with the aromatics, which is the, the kind of oniony parts, uh, oniony vegetables in the world. So, you know, we're doing the spring onions. You could also do shallots. You could do scallions. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Regular onions as well would be fine if you don't have the spring onions. All right, let me do a little more. That chunk. It really comes down to what you have in the box and you just learn how to switch things up. So those spring onions in another month or so will be normal, regular yellow scout onions. Um, but right now we're thinning, thinning the field a bit. And so it gives us the spring onions. Same thing with green garlic. People have asked me, well, what is green garlic? And it's just immature, it's baby garlic before it's turned into a hard bulb. <clears throat> yeah, green garlic is like a treat right now. I was so excited to see that because it shows up yeah. for, I don't know, what would you, what would you say, Lorraine, like um, a month? Not even, maybe, I don't uh, You mean before the regular garlic is ready? Well, I feel like I see the green garlic for a while and then it just kind of, yeah, and then, it stops showing up in the boxes because it just gets a little too big. Like it's time for it to just be fried and cured and. It'll probably be about two months. And then in June, we'll have the full, full garlic. <clears throat> oh, okay, gotcha. For me, it almost always shows up right about the time I run out of garlic. Which <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and so here it is. I'll show you kind of what it looks like, a little close up. So here's the green garlic, kind of this, funny little pink stripe to it down here. And the, yep. the fun thing about it is that you can use the entire thing. Um, and I'm gonna try something that I've never really tried before. I'm, I'm separating out the tops from the bottom part and I'm gonna chop up the white and light green part, just like I would a normal clove of garlic. I'm gonna kind of cut it really small and mince it. And then, um, I don't know if you've done this before, Lorraine, but I thought I'm gonna try just putting these tops in, just throw them in whole into the soup and just see if it'll, you know, kind of flavor the soup. 
Um, oh, yeah, definitely. I use those a lot in dips and throw them into the Cuisinart or the blender. Chop oh, them up super fine. Yeah. Okay, cool. So there's some green garlic, and I'm also going to add a little bit of grated ginger. <laughs> that. So the ginger, what I like to do is just use a spoon to kind of peel off the outer um, like skin. Because if you use an actual peeler, you end up getting too much of the flesh and it just kind of goes to waste. So I'm just going to do a quick little peel there. So I just want to have like a little knob or so. It's going to end up being probably about a couple of tablespoons, maybe not quite that amount. You could grate it or you can mince it. I'm just going to mince it right now. I'm going to, my grater's somewhere. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, but then I have to <laughs> find it. So just mince, chop, chop, chop. So the garlic and the ginger are going to kind of go in together at the same time. So I'm going to just put them together in the same little prep bowl. And all this kind of chopping and prepping that I'm doing is it's called mise en place, which means to put into place. And so that way I'm not trying to like cook something over here and chop something at the same time and risk the thing that I'm cooking burning and all of that. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, you know what? That oh, you know, I found one other thing which I thought would be fun to put in here, and I think this is from your box. This I always think these are like a daikon radish, but I actually think this is a turnip. It has some purple. It is. Okay, so it's it's, a top. yeah, so I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that too. Turnips are a tricky thing because it that's um, it's a vegetable that most people aren't used to eating. And they tend to have a really hard time uh, figuring out how to incorporate it into, into things. I use it in place of potatoes. So when we don't have potatoes in season, I'll, I'll cube it up and put it into soups. But they're also really good when you slice them real thin and just saute them in butter yes. or cube them and roast them, especially with fennel. I love to roast them with fennel. And then you can just put them into all kinds of things. To me, it tastes a little bit like a radish, so I think, you know, that's why I was kind of thinking it would be fun to put it into the soup. So, yeah. So there is my main elements here. Um, let me get this thing going. Temperature. All right. So pretty much every soup, we start it with, you know, a little saute. So we'll start with sauteing the spring onions and the carrots. The carrots are kind of hard, so they're going to need a little extra cooking time. Um, and then we'll put in the, this, uh, the turnip pieces here and the cabbage and then our ginger garlic. And then the thing that's going to really bring a lot of the flavor is the kimchi. So we're going to add kimchi into the soup you know, as if it were just kind of a soup ingredient and not necessarily like a um, garnish which is kind of how it's served sometimes at Korean restaurants. So, oh wait, I took it out. Okay. So while I'm just kind of waiting for this to heat up, heat badly, sorry. Um, I'm gonna chop up about half a cup or so of the kimchi. <laughs> and this has got all kinds of goodness in it. This is gonna add spice. Heat. I can see a lot of red pepper flakes, <clears throat> and it'll have kind of some tanginess. If you've never had kimchi, it's very healthy for you. It's a fermented food. It's got probiotics in it. Okay. <clears throat> so, in goes the carrots and the spring onions. Oh, 
while that's doing its thing, I'll just kind of get our get the kimchi chopped up a little bit more fine. <coughs> and I will um, put this together in a recipe that makes sense for all of you, and we'll send it out when we send out the video. I'm just going to kind of rough chop it. It doesn't have to be like super fine or anything. You can always add more kimchi at the end, too. This is just going to kind of get it started and help integrate some of that spice in with the, in with the broth. <coughs> So Lorraine, I was hoping that you could also talk a little bit about just like what ingredients will be coming up in this spring. Um, you know, there's, you know, on our website, we do have a seasonality chart. I believe Terra Firma Farm put one together, which was really handy. And so that's on our site, but it's always kind of, I wanted just to hear like what you're, what's going to be coming up, like spring season and summer, what do you have in case people are thinking of signing up? For what yeah. So <clears throat> unfortunately, <laughs> we um, we dropped the ball this year and didn't get any fava or uh, sugar snap peas planted because I thought usually Jose asked me for for seeds when we need them for those items and he didn't this year. <clears throat> it's possible he thought he did, but I never got the message in any case. So that's really unfortunate because they feature pretty heavily in our spring boxes. Um, but we'll have uh, coming up are actually some nice radishes. We have black radishes coming in and uh, the alpine daikon radish, which is really delicious. Um, and we'll have some lettuces. And I think, I know we've already got some summer squash planted. So hopefully we'll have those a little earlier. I'm hoping to get our potatoes in the ground in the next few weeks. So they should be ready by June. Um, <clears throat> And I'm trying to think of what we have in the greenhouse. Um, it's a whole bunch of things we've got planted in the greenhouse, lettuces, more greens. I mean, for us, we can go grow greens so much, so many months out of the year. So that's kind of a nice thing to always have. But coming up in the, in the summer, we'll have eggplant, tomatoes, peppers, um, the summer squash, potatoes. What's that? Basil. Fantastic yes. basil. Yeah. Definitely. Basil Definitely. by the man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do bag basil now yeah. as opposed to bunch basil. Right. Okay. All right. This is looking pretty good coming along there. I'm going to put in our um, the turnip pieces. <laughs> And the nice thing about turnips is they, they tend to absorb the flavors of things kind of like tofu does. Um, you know, they'll take on, like, they're going to pick up the flavors from the kimchi. The kimchi? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm going to put in the cabbage as well. Things are cooking quickly over here. <clears throat> and this won't take very long, as this will kind of wilt a little bit. So I know, Lorraine, that you guys have, you're mentioning greens. Um, you do have a lot of interesting greens, which I think would coordinate well with this little soup too. Like I, I feel like you do some Asian greens. Like um, we do, <clears throat> we do a lot of Asian greens. We're just kind of at the tail end, and unfortunately, it's the soil's been so wet. We haven't been able to get our seeds in the ground, but we've got tot soy and and bok choy, and then uh, red frill and gold frill mustards, and. Um, more things like that, hopefully spinach pretty soon. I'm thinking this coming week, we'll be able to get a lot of seeds in the ground, which will be good. Cause and it's gonna be kind of slim. <laughs> this time of year is always a little slim. I feel like this whole March, April, it's like we're transitioning out of the 
winter, but the right. summer is not quite kicked in, and yeah, so. You call it the, hung the hungry month. You got it, yeah. You got it. Um, so these mustard greens here, this is, they obviously have kind of a little reddish, purplish tint to them. Yeah. Is there like you find there to be a big difference in flavor between some of the different mustards? Yeah, I find the red mustard, um, that that red mustard I don't find is too sharp. I think it has a really nice, nice lighter flavor. Um, it's one of my favorites. And it also the leaves are on the more delicate side, so you don't have to cook them for too long. You know, not like kale or collards. They'll cook cook up pretty quick. They're actually great in eggs. They kind of contrast creamy eggs nicely. Oh, that's a great idea. Eggs, yeah. I was kind of envisioning like some little strips of these mustard greens in the soup. So I'm gonna kind of do a little fine, fine shopping here. <laughs> All right, this is good. I'm there's a little bit of browning going on in the bottom of the pan. I'm just gonna kind of build flavor in there. So in goes my green garlic and my ginger. I'm gonna give that a really fast, quick little saute. And then the kimchi. All right. Now everything will turn kind of a a little bit of a spicy red. <laughs> so you can also add, um, you know, chicken or something to this. And like, here's the point where um, if I'm doing like a chicken soup, I would add the entire, I, I get a whole chicken and then I just pull the skin off. Otherwise it adds a lot of fat to this soup. And then you just put the whole chicken in there, breast side down and then add your liquids. Um, and then once it's cooked through, you just pull the whole chicken out and pull the meat off. And I find it's a really great way to get all of the meat used um, so that you're not, you know, wasting it. Yet. So um, anyway, this would be oh, a good okay. way to use up um, leftover chicken. Yes. You know, if you roast chicken and you have leftover pieces, then, um, you know, at the end of your soup, you can, because the chicken is already cooked, you can just chop it up and throw it in just long enough for it to heat up. Yes. Or rotisserie chicken. I know a lot of people will buy rotisserie chicken um, because they're, you know, getting home late and who's got time to put a chicken in the oven? Rotisserie chickens are great because you can enjoy your rotisserie chicken dinner and then you can have soup and you can use some in a risotto. I sometimes say use leftovers and do enchiladas with them. Yeah, that's you just good. add a ton of veggies. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Great point. Okay, I'm going to need another quart of this. Is just a vegetable broth. And I'm going to add a little extra water too, just because we're going to throw the noodles right into the pot. It's kind of like one dish meal here. I don't have to cook ramen noodles separately. <laughs> Good. All right. So then this will come to a boil. Oh, and here's my green garlic tops. I'm just going to throw those in there kind of for fun. <clears throat> season the soup. Um, yeah, and then we'll let that boil and then um, then it will be time to put in some noodles. So I just have some little packets of ramen here. And then to finish it off, I wanted to use some of the chives from the CSA box. So, and I also have my, my mustard. <laughs> I didn't want this to come to boil first and then we'll add in the mustard. <clears throat> I just, I feel like whenever I have a soup, you know, I want to have something dark green in there. <laughs> so just kind of yeah. balance it all out. 
Um, and it looks pretty too against the red from the kimchi. Pop those up. Hello? Oh, and you know, there's one other thing that I will add to the soup at the very end, which is also an add-on product from Eat Well, which is miso. Yes. So I just I have like a, a white miso here, just kind of, you know, from the store. Um, tell us about the people that make the miso. That so one. the miso that we get is from Aiden Fermented Foods in San Francisco. And Mariko, who um, is originally from Japan, she made miso, which she sold to friends and family in San Francisco when they had the big nuclear um, meltdown at we're in Japan after the the um, the big storm. So <clears throat> she was kind of a fundraiser thing that she did, and everybody was so thrilled with her miso that they convinced her to start a business. And now she has actually um, she has a brick and mortar with a, a shop with a store. And she does uh, miso making classes, oh. which look really, really fun. And her misos, I remember when she started at the farmer's market in San Francisco, because I've always loved miso soup. Um, <clears throat> then I went up and I tried her misos and I was so blown away because I've, I've bought miso for years and years and years, always from the health food store, but I'd never tasted miso like hers. Hers are so good. And... Um, and I just, you know, I started buying them when she was at the market. She was just kind of a pop-up at the market. And then when she got her stand, she and I, actually, I'm picking up a case of miso from her tomorrow. So I just, I knew I had to offer that to the CSA members because miso is so good for you. Yeah. And definitely it's something you want to add to your soup at the end. You don't want to boil miso because it cooks the bacteria, the good bacteria out. Yes. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to um, mention that as well. Um, so yeah. I'll and the red mist, it will be great because a lot of times in a soup like this in Japan, you'd have little, little bits of seaweed and that dark uh, red and green mustard is going to look kind of like that seaweed floating yeah. around. That's It'll true. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, okay. So this is not quite boiling. We're not going to like hang out here and wait for me to make this soup, but I just wanted to, you know, walk through the steps. Um, once it boils, you know, I could put the noodles in or I could just do the noodles separately, um, but I'm definitely going to add the, the mustard greens and the top. The top. Um, actually, I think it's hot enough right now. I'm going to add the mustard in there. <laughs> So one of the things that I do when I'm making soup with noodles, I actually always cook my noodles separate and I keep my noodles separate. I add them to the bowl um, and I store them separately. That's true. I, Sometimes they just absorb all the soup. It's like they inflate and you, know, you, have, <laughs> you have no more soup. You have no more broth. It's yeah. just being a noodle stew or something. No, that's, that's a good point. Um, I think, you know, if you were just doing this, like, for a couple people and you're going to eat it all at once. Yeah, not like, a problem. Throw those noodles in and then you're just going to eat the whole thing. But if you put it in the fridge overnight, like, and have yeah. leftovers, you're going to have, like, a noodle mess. <laughs> not really a mess, but yeah. it's going to be a lot more noodles. Oh, so I, I often like to take my soups and turn them into something else. Um, so I'll, I'll use, like, I'll, if I have a few cups of soup left I'll I'll add them to rice cooking rice um, and add more vegetables so I end up with a kind of a rice pilaf vegetable thing um, and so it, it gives me a little more freedom and options for what I can do with leftover soup I'm a big believer in turning something into something else and then turning that into something else you just kind of keep recycling um, you know, before we let you go, Lorraine, I was thinking that we could maybe just go through the, the rest of the box and yeah. just kind of just chat through some ideas of what um, what to do. I mean, I'll tell you what I'm planning to do, but you can tell me what you do. With the chard? Yeah. Well, this week I, I made the chard tzatziki, which oh, 
um, I found it on the Martha Stewart website and actually was really good. Although I changed the recipe a little bit and I used uh, the spring garlic. And um, what I do with, with greens like the chard is I boil a big pot of water. I rinse the chard. I leave it rubber banded together. I rinse it under in under running water. And then I bring a pot of boiling water to, up and I hold the stem end and I just swirl it in the pot of water. Oh, okay. And so the greens are melted or wilted. And then I chop the stems off and then you can use the stems however you like. But then it's an easy way. You can cook all your greens that way, chop them up and just stop. And you can like par cook them or you can fully cook them. You can mix them all together. You can keep them separate. But that means in just a few minutes, like in 10 minutes, once the water's boiling, like when we have four bunches of greens in the box, I can do that with all the greens and be done in 10 minutes, put them into a storage container, and then you have them for the rest of the week. So maybe in the morning we're going to make some scrambled eggs. I'll just take a handful and throw it into the pan with the scrambled eggs. Or whatever it is you're going to do for dinner, maybe then I'll take some and stir fry it super quick because it's already mostly cooked. Right. Okay. Yeah. Par cooking. I, I'm a big fan of beans and greens, kind of the Italian Absolutely. canton. So I tend to saute chard and I would definitely put in the green garlic, um, yes. some, ch some chives, maybe even some of the fennel and just do like a little saute, add some Parmesan and a little bit of um, stock to that maybe. And so I think yeah. that's a plan for that. Um, the cabbage or red cabbage. What's your favorite cabbage thing these days? Well, I tend to like slaw. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> this time of year, I actually like slaw with citrus. Exactly. Yeah. I like I it. You're just going to say. And yeah. then also, I'll, I'll put raw fennel in it. I'll mm -hmm. shave a little fennel in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can make a dressing. You can use just a little bit of the spring onion and a little bit of spring garlic. The nice thing about spring garlic, it's not as, as much of a kick flavor-wise as cured garlic. Um, so you can get a hint of garlic, and it's also a little bit sweet and a little green tasting. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, I did come across a recipe, which I've done before, which is um, the red cabbage with citrus. You could do oranges. You could do grapefruit. You could do a mixture of all of that with um, cilantro and pepitas, pumpkin seeds. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That was really tasty. That was just a really good salad. So, um, all right. And then we have our little radicchio here, which this looks so much <laughs> different than the other one. Um, the radicchio is kind of crazy. I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes we get seeds and it's like, well, that's not exactly what it said on the package. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was remembering that, um, well, now the weather is nice, but I was going to say during the summer, um, you can actually grill lettuces, like endive, yes. radicchio, even a romaine. You just kind of yeah. pop it right down the middle and brush it with oil and actually throw it on the grill, you know, really quick. One side, the other side, throw yeah. some balsamic on, and it's almost like a warm, and then you can chop it up. So you have kind of like a warm chicory um, salad. Wow. It's really, it sounds weird, but it's very tasty. So I like to use radicchio and or arugula uh, when I make steak and I pull the steak out of the griddle pan, I just throw those more bitter greens into the pan. I turn the heat off and I just throw it right into the pan and all the juices and the salt and the fat and just toss it around till it wilts and, and then serve the steak on a bed of the <clears throat> wilted bitter greens is delicious. Yeah, I like that idea, that's awesome. And then last but not least is the parsley, which is pretty versatile. You can put that in anywhere. I could go in yeah. with my beans and greens. I could, you know, get mixed into a, the salad or whatever. So, yeah. Made it I actually, made, uh, two weeks ago, I made French omelet using a lot of parsley and a lot of the chives mm. and had a rather green rolled omelet. <laughs> great, simple Jacques Pepin recipe. <laughs> oh, that sounds yummy. It sounds great. Yes. Yeah. Eggs, eggs are happening now. The days are getting longer. The chickens are waking up. And thank God. God it's eggs, I think. <laughs> Yes. Thank goodness. Right. Okay. Well, I think that is about it. Um, we'll laugh for six. So I just want to wrap things up. Um, 
just starting to boil in there. So I've got dinner almost ready. Um, so thanks yeah. everybody for <laughs> this and thanks for signing up to the class and we will send out the video to all of you. Um, and just remember, check out Eat Well Farms website at eatwell.com and we'll make sure you guys get those links as well. And thank you so Great. much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Stephanie. And thanks, Noah. Have a great weekend, you guys. Okay. Bye.